Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night. It is the Earthmaster out here, just about 11:40 uh, p.m. here, California time, almost Sunday here, the West Coast. October 5th, 2024 is the current date. Latest earthquake activity shows a 2.2 into the area of Oklahoma. I want to cover space weather activity here real quick before we jump into earthquake activity. I mean, uh, I don't know about this one. <laughs> I think these last couple CMEs here have completely dodged the planet. And that is a, a basically a, a failed forecast here. You know, these guys running the Space Weather Prediction Center have some of the uh, most advanced equipment out there uh, for monitoring CME activity. And I tell you what, it, uh, it, it doesn't look good in terms of the Aurora forecast here. Uh, we're supposed to be seeing G3 storming conditions here. In fact... Last night and the night before and tonight, uh, we're supposed to see uh, some elevated auroras out here. And it's looking more and more likely here that we're not going to see it. I don't see it taking this long um, for a, uh, a pretty powerful CME from that X9.0 flare a couple days ago. You know, I, I don't believe it's a slow mover. So if anything, it, uh, it as well completely missed the planet. Nothing, not even a sign of it. If we check the space weather uh, real-time solar wind stream here, things are uh, pretty quiet. I mean, no elevated activity, no sign of anything unusual. Uh, just a, uh, a quiet day in terms of the aurora activity. And we weren't expecting quiet. quiet. We were supposed to have a, a couple elevated events here over the last three nights. So if this doesn't come by tomorrow morning, that's pretty much done. I don't. Again, I don't see it taking any longer. It should have came uh, today. So what can you do? You know, I think they may need to adjust some of their equipment to better get a you know get a better visual on how much plasma from the the CME you know the explosion there is headed to Earth and in what direction. You know, I, I'm pretty certain they already have that type of equipment. But, uh, yeah, it's a failed forecast, it looks like here. So, unless something pops up out of the blue, I could be wrong, but I'm not going to stay up all night. I was waiting for it. That's why I kind of put out a little bit later update than normal. I was hoping to see it come in, and then I could uh, do an update on it. But right now, I'm doing an update on no solar weather activity. So, as far as the auroras go. Still have an elevated flare threat at about 30% chance or so. 75 for the M flare. C flare around 99% chance or so. And we do have a number of sunspots that are currently facing the Earth. As you can see there, quite a bit of uh, large ones out there. We've got 3848 here. Fairly massive area, but there's a central core splittage here. Uh, that may harbor some potential for some M flare activity. Uh, but most of the X flare activity is going to be probably from this area and the departing sunspots over here that are now on the western quadrant of the sun getting ready to uh, stretch out here and, and be out of sight, out of mind. So, all right. Earthquake activity. Lighten up out here slightly across the west coast. Some more activity there in the northern California. This one uh, fairly shallow, 1.3. Seen a handful of earthquakes out here today at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Let's check out the... Uh, trimmer tonight see what we have for the cascadia trimmer still confined here to the central oregon coast 159 epicenters been fairly consistent out here and consistency in the same location uh north here of the bay area getting a little bit of swarming out here across the saint helena area uh, mostly twos out there and some ones in there as well from the last 24 hours uh, this is the northern end here. I was looking on the uh, Timbler map. This is going to be towards the northern end of the West Napa Fault Zone, uh, or po possibly in between those or the Atlas Peak Foss Valley area. There's a couple different faults that run up here through this area. Uh, but a little bit of swarming going on there. Let's see. rest of California out here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, minimal movement at best right now. Nothing above 2.5 uh, aside from what do we got going on over here? 2.9 in Nevada right now in the last hour. Aside from that, Death Valley seen a 3.6 earthquake. Um, 
So regionally out here, it almost looks like we're seeing uh, some uptick going on here on a broad scale of things out here. So keep an eye on Southern California overnight. This 3.6 striking out there around Death Valley, Furnace Creek area, up in the hills a little bit. Death Valley sits right here. Fault systems run through here. And uh, not 100% certain which fault that popped on or uh, hit on. But a little bit of earthquake activity out there, followed by a 1.3. Very shallow crustal quakes out there. A um, little bit of swarming going on here across the Inglewood area. Now, this is going to be... Let's see, which fault system is that? Potentially the Newport Inglewood Rose Canyon fault. Got uh, some decent swarming stirring up out here. Uh, let me check the last seven days. Not a whole lot of, of activity in that area. In fact, uh, it looks like a new region seeing some elevated activity right now. Underneath the Inglewood area. Just, you know, it's still an overall pattern out here of elevated seismic activity. So keep an eye on that. Scattered activity all around the Los Angeles area. One on the uh, Puente Hills Thrust Fault here, 1.7. Actually, it looks like there was two of them here in the last 24 hours so just be on guard folks looks like this may start to pick up again uh, one little earthquake out here across the uh, wind river range area south of there 2.7 i'm gonna double check the uh, yellowstone seismograph stations here real quick see what we have really no earthquake swarm uh, no major unusual activity wind events there earlier it looks like but aside from that uh, really not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity showing up there on the map. We had a little small earthquake there, the 2.7, earlier this evening. Oklahoma, Texas, oil fields getting hit. A little bit of activity out here across the New Madrid seismic zone. <coughs> ah, excuse me. A couple, uh, 2.1 and a 1.4 out there. Let's see what else we got here across the world. Elevated seismic activity here across the Aleutian Trench with a swarm of activity in this area uh, a couple fives and some fours out there down into uh the subduction zone overall pattern out here in the last seven days has been heightened out here across the Aleutian trench so we'll keep an eye on that when that moves it can produce some big earthquakes out here so definitely keep an eye on that area a big island of hawaii getting some earthquake activity stretching out here towards the uh hill in the slump area Got to watch that. Also some movement off towards the Loihi Seamount. New Zealand's been shaken here slightly with a 5.1. Um, that's what the USGS is reporting. But uh, the EMSC or the uh, GeoNet servers, let me bring those guys up here, uh, are reporting a 5.7 on that earthquake. That earthquake was felt pretty much all over the place there. 37,000 people reporting this earthquake. So, you know, 5.1, I don't know if that would be broad... Uh, as broad as what we're seeing there with that earthquake. So they're reporting a 5.7, USGS a 5.1. Take your pick. Either way, a little bit of earthquake activity rocking the New Zealand area. Uh, a little bit of newer movement up here along the Kermadec Trench. So definitely got some large-scale adjustment going on. North-south, now uh, a deeper earthquake here across the Izu Trench, which is a very active day here. Look at this. So I expect California to start moving here. We'll probably see a little bit more elevated activity, more felt earthquakes here, potentially overnight and into tomorrow. It just makes sense here. I mean, we're seeing elevated activity right now in terms of the multitude of quakes out there starting to pick up across the West Coast in various areas. So uh, we should see things start to uh, kick up a little bit here. Pretty active, though, across the world. All right, uh, what else we got here, folks? Um, off the coast here of Australia, 4.1. You know, things are uh, looking super active. All right, uh, hurricane activity. Potentially, Florida is looking at a Category 3, maybe higher, as we head towards um, the middle of this coming week. And right around the Tampa area, it looks like. Let's see here if I'm right on my, my locations out here. Yep. It almost looks like it wants to hit the uh, Tampa area. I'm going to bring up the southeast map here. Um, and, yeah, that's a 
not a good sign right over the Tampa area. I'm hoping this changes, but it's been fairly consistent here with a uh, pretty strong hurricane hitting this area and then uh, moving off to the northeast. High pressure building up here, so that's going to squash this uh, tropical system, keep it south. But uh, I don't know if that's going to be enough to keep it away from Florida. It looks like we got uh, a pretty serious situation coming up there uh, for the uh, folks there. Now this is called Tropical Storm Milton. Um, some sufficient rainfall headed to the Florida area, that's for sure. And you got to worry about uh, the you know the high wind and stuff like that from this hurricane. Um, let me go over here to Tropical Tidbits, Current Storm, Kirk. Let's go to Milton. Let's see what these uh, models are showing. Look at this. This is not good. We're going to see uh, Milton here rapidly intensify. Let's hope these models are wrong. Some of these models stretching up around Category 4, Category 5 hurricane strength. And I don't think Tampa has seen anything like that slam into it. I know they get hurricanes, right, north and south and east of there. But this is going to be directly over the Tampa area. Um, we're going to have to watch these models pretty closely here. The path consistency, uh, most of them here are taking a northern route here, right around Tampa area. Tampa's right here. A couple models showing the southward area. Uh, but, well, you know, it's, it's hard to say. Going to have to watch this, so just be prepared. I mean, if they're evacuating people or getting ready to, uh, take heed because that uh, is some serious stuff out there with storm surge and... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely check back on that here tomorrow, see what the models look like. In the meantime, folks, have yourself a good night. I'm out of here a little bit on the tired side. I'm going to try to sleep in tomorrow, but uh, we'll catch you guys back out here for the Sunday morning update. Keep an eye there on California. Uh, again, starting to pick up a little bit out here across the West Coast. Overall seismic activity somewhat elevated, so we'll, we'll uh, probably see a little bit more. Um, potentially felt earthquakes out here across Southern California here tonight. Just looking at the way things are going out here. A lot of adjustment across the Pacific Plate and uh, California starting to move right now. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys out here in the morning for the Sunday morning update. Stay safe.